and welcome back to my channel. Today we're chatting what I would do if I wanted to go plant-based in 2024. If you're new here, hi, my name is Cassie Amber and I'm a plant-based holistic nutritionist. I've been eating this way for probably six and a half years now. <laughs> And if you're not already following me on socials, I post more daily things with food and spo recipes and just little educational tips about navigating the online space when it comes to nutrition, I guess, because there's so much opposing information. I'm so excited to be back in your ears. I want to start a new little thing as well. If you take a screenshot of the podcast and share it to your story on Instagram and tag me, I will give you a free month access to my plant-based recipe app, which is my hub where I store all my favorite dishes that are easy, minimal ingredients, minimal cooking time, minimal dishes. That's what I pride myself on. So you can get a free month if you share it to your socials and tag me. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future updates as well. So my first tip is make direct protein swaps. A cauliflower steak is not a steak or a source of protein. A portobello mushroom on a burger is not a source of protein. Even the replacement egg that you can buy, just a powder, that you can make scrambled eggs so you can get a baking version, that is not a direct source of protein. It's just a vegan replacer, but it's just made from powder. So those things are not direct swaps. Even jackfruit, if you have jackfruit tacos, it's a fruit, not a protein. So we actually have to be quite intentional with our meal times to hit our daily targets, especially if you've got physique uh, physique goals and strength goals to do the basic math to work out your requirements basically you do 1.8 or up to 2.2 times your body weight so for me it would be like 2.2 times 55 kg or whatever so then that will give you your average of like what you should be aiming for personally I don't track food even though I should have been this whole time but I've managed to get this far without doing it but if you want to kind of have some guidance instead of tracking all your calories and the carb and fat ratio and all this complex stuff and weighing food if you just at least track your protein target over anything else that can still give you some idea of what you're eating but in a relaxed way and more a positive way rather than a restriction way of showing you all the things you can't have or limiting portion sizes it's more just making you think intentionally about like oh can I have chocolate for dessert or should I make like a little chocolate protein mousse or have some soy yogurt with dark chocolate chips just to boost that and take a little bit more. So many vegans put on the Facebook pages they share their meals and they just take off the meat and then they just got like potato and salad. That is not a balanced meal that's going to keep you feeling full. I've had a client once tell me that she would come home from a workout and eat a cucumber but a cucumber is not going to repair your muscles and fuel you for your day. So you want to be thinking about foods that will keep you going for hours. Number two is don't stress about small amounts if it's more damaging for your mental health than what it's worth. So I think a lot of the reason people fall off plant-based or vegan eating. So vegan is eliminating all animal products to the best of your ability, including food, clothing, makeup, self-care, hygiene products, like things that aren't tested on animals, leather, everything like that, like absolutely nothing. Whereas plant-based is more just focused on the diet side and when I did my studies, the one I did was focused on the blue zones, which is the places around the world where people live to 100 years or older with the least amount of obesity, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. So what they described it as is plant-based means animal products take up 10% or less of your diet. So I really liked this approach and it's why I chose that course because everyone is literally different. I can't say here's the framework you need to eat exactly like this to get this result and give that to every single person because we all absorb nutrients differently everyone has different mental health and like ways of doing their daily habits so if their routine is too overwhelming they're more likely to go for something less healthy if they can't actually keep up with it and then fall off and then land in bad health or not have a, as good an outcome as the person next to them let's say so the way i kind of do it is be intuitive if there's something that you're craving a lot for me that is salmon right before my time of month comes and it's been like that on clockwork like the week before or a few days before it just pops into my brain like i need salmon and i just buy a two-pack from the supermarket and i just have that 
and then it's I think it's like got to do with the fats I also heard that it could be the copper that my body is craving so I just do that twice a month and boom the craving goes away until the next month it's like clockwork and when I tried to cut it out I went crazy in the supermarket like I need salmon and like it's just how my personal body works so I've had people message me things like oh I've thought about introducing eggs again but then I'll not be vegan anymore and that's why I take my stance even though it goes against the grain of everyone even though I'm not saying like you need to be 100% vegan no matter what we are all different and you know your body best no matter what anyone tells you so whether it's like a craving for something you want to have a couple times a month I also am more relaxed around small amounts of things so say if I'm at the airport and I'm trying to get some food and there's like a veggie panini or something but it's got butter on it it's okay I just have it if it's like smidgen of dairy or a biscuit if it's got milk powder or something like I'm not drinking milk or going out of my way to source it and put it in my home but if it's just there in the food when I'm out and about I don't stress about small amounts and personally I find that easier to stick to some people like to go all or nothing because they might find it hard to stay within the lines like if there's any source of freedom they might go too far if that makes sense so it's completely up to the person but as just think of it like as long as you're eating plants and eating well most of the time that's what matters consistency is key tip number three is swap out one thing at a time and slowly go through and find your favorite brands like there's no rush you don't need to give up milk meat eggs all dairy cheese everything overnight and like think that you'll have it perfectly figured out the next day or the next week I just started off one thing at a time so I actually gave up milk when I was 17 and I had I remember I had a whole a cough for a whole entire year even through summer I just always had mucus and phlegm in my throat and then I stopped drinking milk first and then found what replacement I liked and then when I was 21 I tried to go vegetarian lasted a few weeks and didn't really know what to do then gave up and then that's when I watched the documentaries and then decided to give plant-based a go and notice the reason I stuck with this is because it cured my digestion so much like I was having IBS and everything and it just fixed my life so that's why I'm just such a huge believer in it because I've seen results myself you just feel so light you don't feel bogged down with your body trying to digest so much stuff all the time and it just feels good in my soul when I look at my plate of food because I do love animals as well it just feels like I'm living in alignment so figure out like what works for you with eggs personally I still ate eggs for my own backyard chickens because I was there raising them like I don't kill the chickens when they get to a certain age for food or anything the last few houses I was at since I've been in Australia I've always had backyard chickens up until this year yeah in the last year I guess other people have different values around that like some people find that okay because they know that the chickens are happy and they are literally their friends and they they lay eggs anyway because they've been bred for that and other people think like oh no you're still taking something from the animal which you can then just feed it back to them for the nutrients as well which I would still do with the shells um, sometimes I give the eggs to the dog it makes their coat really nice but they're literally your friends and that it's laying them anyway or you can give them away to people like your family or something as well so the choice is totally up to you depending on your values and swap out things one at a time so when it comes to cheese vegan cheese will never quite be the same so dairy cheese has something called casomorphins which is a type of protein I believe so it literally targets the same part of your brain as heroin so when you eat it your brain actually lights up and it's actually physically addictive so cheese will never quite be the same but there are some supermarket brands that a lot of them are coconut oil based or potato starch based with a bit of nutritional yeast in them and they're okay you can get some really nice gourmet ones from health stores like you can get feta that they keep in the fridge that is like whipped and marinated and tastes really delicious and rich so depends where you go but just try one thing at a time until you kind of find what you like same as the different types of milk like try almond milk try a couple of different brands try oat milk or soy milk soy milk is the only plant milk with 
the equivalent protein is cow's milk. So all the nut milks, say almond, coconut, uh, cashew milk, they all don't have protein. But soy milk has eight grams per serve, which is on par with dairy. So if you are cautious of your calories and maybe say you're on a calorie deficit, having the protein in the milk can actually make a big difference when it comes to making up your daily intake for the day. Soy is nothing to be stressed about. There's still this big stigma around like, oh, you better watch your soy intake. The soy milk was a threat to the dairy industry. So the dairy industry started putting out all these studies saying like, oh no, soy milk gives you man boobs and things like that. And everyone is so scared of it. So soy contains phytoestrogens, which mimic estrogen in the body, which have both estrogenic effects and anti-estrogenic effects. So there's still like, the data isn't exactly clear, but it's not like it causes man boobs or causes hormone imbalances. It like has both kind of effects, kind of like a balancing effect. And there have actually been studies done that shows that it helps protect against breast cancer. And especially in Japan, so where they eat lots of tofu and edamame and miso and things like that they actually have the lowest rates of cancer i'm literally getting goosebumps talking about this because i just forgot actually how passionate i am about all of it and breaking stigmas and things like that but soy is nothing to be afraid of if you're having like soy milk in your coffee and some tofu with lunch or whatever like a normal amount it is actually healthy unless your medical practitioner has told you otherwise but also remember all the medical people have been taught the normal way of eating so depends on what kind of practitioner and things like that so keep that in mind tip number four is start trying out new ingredients so maybe you want to try incorporating some quinoa into your meals that can be made savory that is actually a great source of protein as well so it's like a grain that looks like a little seed and you can boil it you can cook it in stock for like a savory option and mix it through salads or have it as a side to your dinner or most people don't know, you can actually cook it as a sweet food. So say if you don't like oats or you want a gluten-free option, which is something a little bit different, you can cook it, say, in some coconut milk and water, add some protein powder, some cacao powder, add some raspberries and have it as like a sweet breakfast as well. Nutritional yeast is another one. It's basically like savory cheese flakes and it also has a little bit of b12 in it as well so that's great to sprinkle over food add to soups macaroni cheese things like that avocado toast i add lots of seeds to my meals not that that's a plant-based thing but it's just something i've always done in my cooking whether it's pumpkin seeds sunflower seeds you can add hemp seeds for more crunch or pine nuts are my favorite for bursting flavor cashews are really nice and curries and things like that just a small amount for like this extra bit of crunch and fattiness polenta is another one that's not often heard of which you can make like polenta chips or a polenta mash millet is another one that people often have as a save uh, as a breakfast option and tvp which is textured vegetable protein so it's basically like a soy protein that is like an alternative to mince if you don't want to buy mock meat so you can get it on its own or you can get it in little sachets that have all the flavors and herbs in it you literally just add boiling water it cooks itself in the bowl not even in the pan or pot and then add some probably crushed tomatoes for a bit of hydration and then you've got a really healthy plant-based mince and another one that's not often heard of is seitan so that is a gluten-based protein so that is made from vital wheat gluten which is like a flour and they mix it with water and some miso or herbs and things like that to give it like a it's like chicken so they turn it into a dough and you can pull it apart and you can like eat it like chicken shreds or you can buy mock meat that's already made up like that as well that is one of my favorite sources of protein i don't eat a lot of gluten but when it's mixed with lots of veggies and things like that it's super high in protein my favorite brand in australia is get planted so that's a 300 gram pack and it says three serves per pack but when i was cooking dinner for myself and my partner in my last relationship i would just split it in half so we'd have half each and that was actually 30 grams protein for a half pack which is like a third of my daily <laughs> requirements pretty much so really really good for protein number five is choose minimally processed mock meat such as the get planted one i just mentioned the corn brand is my 
another one of my favorites. The chicken pieces aren't vegan, they're just vegetarian because they do have some egg white, but they are based on microprotein, which is like a fungus. But I really like the texture of those. I never used to buy them because of the egg, because it's not actually vegan, but when supermarkets around you, the options are limited, it's still a good option for me personally and it's just a smidgen in there so I just buy it anyway now. And the Sunfed brand, I've not seen that in any supermarkets around me for a while. I haven't seen the chicken for ages. It's popular in New Zealand but I do buy the Sunfed bacon and that is the best one that you can buy. They add liquid hickory smoke and it's high in protein, super minimal ingredients. So say when you take those brands, and then you compare it to like an impossible burger. I see all these things on the internet like, oh yeah, they compare meat and then they compare the impossible burger or beyond burger. And the beyond one has all these ingredients and then they say, oh, meat is just one ingredient. It's not. They put things in it to make it shelf stable. Uh, most of it has antibiotics. Like there's more to it than meets the eye. Meat is not just the only ingredient just because that's what they say on the pack. So it's not actually a fair argument to compare like meat to the most processed mock meat you can buy. The other ones, it would be meat compared to something with say the get pl planted one with vital wheat gluten, a little bit of oil and some herbs. Like it, it pretty much as natural as you can get. So there still are really amazing options for mock meat. It's something that can benefit a lot of people, even a lot of the sausages. You can get super processed ones or you can get ones that are just tofu and herb based and they're very natural and it can just add variety to your meals. So you don't, like some people just have beans and tofu and rice on repeat, <laughs> but I don't really like that. And it can also be uh, comforting for people, like say if you want to make nachos or lasagna and you just want to have like a veggie mince and you can like recreate those meals rather than going backwards and going back to your old diet so there are so many benefits to having mock meat and I saw also in a Facebook group this lady was kind of joking like oh we went to our friend's house and they ended up getting takeaways and the friends were like oh you eat don't know what store it was because I think she was in America but say it's like the equivalent of Hungry Jack's or Burger King that I've got a plant-based Whopper burger kind of thing and the friends were like oh you eat that don't you because it's plant-based and they're like gosh no we are plant-based we don't eat stuff like that but just because you're plant-based it doesn't mean you can never have an unhealthy meal it's not meant for health <laughs> I still buy it every now and again and you can feel how processed it is like if you finish work late there's no food at home I'm like, oh, I'll just go get takeaways and like as you're eating it you can feel like oh it's definitely very processed and oily and no fiber or anything but like there's a time and place it doesn't mean you can never ever ever have anything bad <laughs> tip number six is know your why and eat balanced it can be easy i guess for people to fall off the bandwagon when maybe other people's opinions or comments get to them and a lot of people like so many people try to go plant-based or vegan and then quit after a certain amount of time. I think it's got like the, I don't know, probably one of the highest quitting rates probably out of any diet, probably apart from keto because you physically should not be doing that long term. <laughs> but you sh my motto is you should be able to do your diet forever. So if that means not restricting 100%, then do what works for you. I, I often talk about this as well. Like I've got friends who so they eat plant-based during the week and eat what they want in the weekend or they eat vegan or plant-based at home but if they dine out of the, at a restaurant they might get a little treat. So it doesn't mean they're a bad person. If that means they having this little thing here and there allows them to stick to it 90-95% of the time, it's better than just being like, oh no it's too hard because I can't eat this one food and then stopping it altogether. So everyone is different, find your balance but when family might have different comments about it or different friends or colleagues or they might just genuinely be worried for you so if you don't know your why it could be easy to yeah let their comments get to you and change your mind about what you're doing and eating balanced is important because I think a big reason so many people have to quit is because they go to extremes so they'll do like fruitarian diet you don't need to eat just fruit to be healthy <laughs> I would be craving something savory after like two pieces of fruit, man. 
like you don't need to do that there's forums online for vegan keto you don't need to do keto vegan and cut all carbs because most of our protein sources are from carbs so just going to those extremes is so unnecessary you don't need to do all these big cleanses or like do only juice cleanses for however many weeks like i know there's different opinions on that but it's not necessary to be healthy kind of thing so if you're going to extremes you may be struggling to get in enough food and enough nutrients and variety which causes actual health issues and that's why there is that stigma that you'll be pale and weak and fade away the other thing i'll touch on is food sensitivities and intolerances this is another reason i promote a 90 95 percent approach or just whatever approach or balance works for you so say if someone is people have posted in the facebook groups they can't digest beans and legumes they're allergic to soy allergic to nuts and seeds and gluten this is like what the diet is made up of so there's honestly not much left protein wise like even peanut butter is a fat with a little bit of protein so they can't have any nut butters seeds uh, they can't have seitan for protein, tofu for protein, any soy products for protein. Like if you actually have that many intolerances, it may not be the best option. And the next best thing that I would suggest is I still quite lean into the Mediterranean type style of eating. So having more fresh fish and a little bit of eggs, not necessarily heaps of dairy, like drinking milk and things like that, but people can enjoy little bits like a bit of cheese and stuff eating mediterranean and plant-based kind of merged together in one so i really like that approach as well if you're trying to cut out too many foods think about seriously where you're going to get like where you're going to meet your needs tip number seven is get eight to twelve month checkups for prevention and just to monitor your health the doctors of i've learned quite a lot about the medical system i actually have a scanner that a lot of people don't believe in that either. It's like an energetic scanner and I got it for my business when I was doing one-on-ones and it would it was through an energetic healer in Sunshine Coast. So I'm actually gonna do one in the new year. Um, I just thought I, yeah, just remembered that I haven't done one for a while, but that was so crazy to me because it scanned your hand and reads everything in your body. And it's, because it's not a blood test, it doesn't show you amounts. Like it doesn't say, oh, your iron is out by this exact, amount it just shows up with things like a traffic light system like these things need attention it shows your honestly like <laughs> it blew my mind it shows your emotions because different emotions affect different organs in your body it shows your level of grounding to the earth and your circadian rhythms and also nutritional deficiencies foods to eat more of and avoid things like that that was a full comprehensive thing of like mind body soul and that's crazy but not everyone has access to something like that if you go to the doctor they'll pretty much just check iron b12 i'm pretty sure and what about this is why i don't get it like what about every other nutrient what about vitamin d what about your other b vitamins that women are often low in what about your thyroid health and iodine and things like that like there's so many things why are we only checking for two <laughs> So like try to get the most comprehensive scan you can and then that kind of just gives you an idea on what supplements you need to update just to make sure you're not taking things for no reason or whether you need to get a new supplement just for a little bit of an extra boost. And yeah, it also like gives you ideas on maybe some ingredients to swap out. So say if something is low, maybe it's a reminder to like eat more colored foods or incorporate certain ingredients into your dinners more often. So just doing that is a preventative measure, no matter what diet you're on, I feel like that's important for everyone, especially in today's world with our modern stresses, our food isn't as nutritionally dense, we're on the go all the time, we're stressed out, uh, we're just not getting the same replenishment as our ancestors and elders would have from their food. So I think that's just important no matter what. So set a reminder, whether it's New Year's every year, your birthday every year, something like that. So each time it comes around, you get reminded to do a full health checkup. And tip number eight is find your go-to recipe. So you want things that you can throw together without much thought if you're coming home from work and you're too tired, you're like, oh, I don't know what to cook and I need to put food on the table for the family or myself or finish my meal prep. And we can often get, I find I get myself decision fatigue when you've been trying to make decisions all day and 
do things at work and then your schedule is crazy and then you the last thing you want to think about is cooking so have your little list of go-to meals that require not much thought or effort my plant powered app is where i store a lot of my favorite food so i've got so many different things in there like vegan butter chicken different goddess bowls soups salads I've split it up into different categories. There's a whole folder just full of breakfast, another folder of smoothies, sweets and desserts, which are things that are like more, I guess, macro balanced. So things I make with protein powder and things that actually feel a bit more wholesome as well. I just wanted a place, per, even for myself, just to store my favorite meals because yeah, I might make something that's amazing and then forget about it and never get to make it again. So I thought, well, why not be able to share that with other people as well? I don't prescribe meal plans or calorie or macro targets. I don't get any of my clients to weigh their food or anything like that. So just having this hub where I leave it up to you to be intuitive and you can choose a couple recipes for the week, two dinners and a breakfast or a sweet treat and then make your grocery list based off that. So that's only a monthly subscription and there's a little community tab in there as well where you can chat and ask questions and get support and there's new recipes being uploaded to that regularly as well. So I'll put that in the description below. Don't forget to check it out and remember if you screenshot this episode, don't forget to add it to your Instagram story and then I'll give you a free month of access as well. If you're already a member of the app, I'll just add a credit to your account. So I'm so excited to get this part on a roll. That's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with future episodes. I'm so excited to be back in your ear and I'm wishing you an incredible 2024 where we all reach our goals, reach new levels and just create the life that we envision and deserve. Thank you. See you next time.